Okay, I will, I'll make sure it's, it's short and sweet because I know we are running a bit late. Um, by the way, I just want to thank Terence and John for inviting me. Uh, very appreciative of that. And Shahano actually shared a lot of great stuff as well. And, you know, sometimes I realize that I should have questioned more instead of just digging mindlessly, right? So I think the, the, the art of questioning is something that I think all of us can take away. And Jimmy as well, sharing the portfolio um, allocation as well. So today... Um, my name is Calvin. I've been investing privately uh, as a full-time investor for close to about two years right now. Um, I blog at calvinstore.com and I run a concentrate, concentrated fund. All right, It's not concentration fund, it's concentrated fund. So there was a typo over there and my personal portfolio. So today my topic, uh, I think, uh, is about the importance of having patience. Okay, so uh, during my free time, I would actually attend AGMs. I think ultimately companies are run by people. And it's important to meet the people that's running the business. So I try my best to meet management as much as possible. Okay. So today, my topic is the importance of patience. But first of all, I would like to highlight that, you know, um, similarly like Shahan, right? I'm a growth investor and growth investors love to invest in multi-baggers. Okay. So multi-baggers are companies that um, grow their share price by, 100%, 200%, and thereabouts. Over the long run, of course, not in the short term. So this key thing of multi-bagger was actually first originated by a guy called Thomas Phelps. And he wrote this book called 100 to 1 in the stock market. And he said this, which I, you know, when I internalized it, it, would, it never got away from me. It's, you know, simply said this, right? To make money in the stock market, you must have the vision to see them, the courage to buy them, and ultimately the patience to hold them. And patient is the rare, rarest of the three. You know, I've known of people that could have been millionaires, should have been millionaires, but today they are not. It's not because they lack the knowledge. It's not because they, you know, don't have the money, but it's all because they lack the patient. Okay? So I'm going to go in and share with you a couple of lessons that I learned over the last few years and how it could be applicable for you as well. All right? So let's head on. Okay? So this is the book called 100 to 1. Uh, previously, it was out of print and people were selling it at $100, $200, thereabouts. And I couldn't, uh, I'm a cheapo, all right? So I didn't want to buy it. So I waited for quite some time and I think there was a publisher who took the rights of this book and decided to publish it. So today it's available. If you want to buy it, uh, go ahead. I think uh, uh, you will love it. I think it will change uh, your investing process as well, okay? So I want to share with you a couple of quotes from uh, Peter Lynch. All right, the first thing he said is this, my best stocks have been the third year and the fourth year and the fifth year I own it, right? Not the third week, not the fourth week. And people want their money very rapidly, but it just doesn't happen. You know, you don't expect to grow a seed and it grows and it becomes a tree the next day, the overnight, right? So essentially what Peter Lynch is telling us is that, you know, for us to have enormous returns in our portfolio. First is that we need a patient and we got to learn how to, you know, hold them for the long haul. And by saying that, here's a caveat, right? We hold them as long as they are performing to our expectations. So if we are saying that this company, you want them to grow by 100% returns every year, but if they suddenly stop growing, they become a slow grower, they're growing at 10 to 20%, then that may not be your criteria. So everyone's criteria will be different. But uh, of course, we do not want a business to deteriorate over the years. If they have a uh, you know huge spike in earnings, uh, sorry, huge spike in uh, debt, the earnings start declining. I think those are things that you want to watch out for. So investing isn't buy and hold forever. Investing is buy and monitor regularly. All right, but patience is something very important. So I just want to share with you a couple of uh, this company if I purchased uh, back then in 2017. Uh, purchasing it in a huge amount of volume, uh, 58 cents, uh, that was my purchase price. Um, that's my name, uh, Sito Yao Singh. So Hype International is actually a, a zam, uh, parts assembling company for uh, Foxconn, which in turn has Apple as their biggest client. So you could see I was buying shares in a very, very big way. Um, I just kept buying and kept buying, right? And eventually, you know, <clears throat> when I sold it, I sold it about 93 cents, 91 cents, and this is my contract. So in total, the value I sold was about $430,000, $100,000. But here's the pain that I've gone through because why? I sold it over here, 
and three months later it went up by another hundred percent. So I could have literally earned another four hundred and twenty hundred thousand dollars, but I did not. And I don't really know how to describe the pain uh to you guys that is watching on it. Uh, but the friends around me knows that I've constantly beat myself over it. And you know, the reason why I started investing was also to give my family, especially my mom, a better life. But knowing that, you know, I could have taken the money and gave a portion to her and she don't have to work anymore. That's extremely, extremely painful to know that I could have done it, but I did not, right? And, and the reason why it happened was because I was just too greedy, right? I, I've made a lot of money in this company and I, and I just wanted to, you know, I couldn't see the forest and I just looking at the, I just, I was just fo focusing on the trees, right? And to me, I, I've learned one thing, right? You know, there's this quote that stick with me after this incident. It goes like this, wealth transfers from the impatient to the patient, right? So it goes like this again, the wealth transfer happens from the impatient to the patient. So along my years of experience uh, investing, I have a lot of friends, right? And there are actually a lot of friends that, you know, honestly, the way I look at they, how they invest, they are really smart. They found really good companies, but because they lack the patient, you know, even though the companies are doing well, that means really these are companies that are doing well, they are growing their earnings and, and they, they just sold the company because they just felt good selling their companies. So in a way, I felt like, you know, they were killing their golden goose. And for some companies, if they have held on throughout, today, they might not be working anymore. They might not need to work anymore. They just, you know, can be a full-time investor. So what I want to share with you is this. Patient will really, really make you a multi-millionaire. Patient will really, really grow your money to ways that you can't imagine. But every single time, if you are just locking in your gains, right? Even if this company is, if, 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 if personally you feel that this is the best company that you've ever seen so far, and every single quarter, the earnings grow without fail, right? They're executing, they're growing their business, growing their market share, the management is honest, capable, you know, the, the, no, the time to sell these companies is essentially never, right? You never sell these companies as long as they are performing. So I would tell you that, you know, um, the key thing is this. After this painful lesson I've gone through, I seldom sell my companies unless the fundamentals deteriorate. I do not sell the companies just because the share price have gone up. I only sell the company when the fundamentals deteriorate. So that is a very, very huge difference. I'm looking at the fundamentals that is changing. I'm not looking at a share price that is, that is moving, okay? And I want to share with you something is that even if the share price go up, there is, you know, people often make remarks like, oh, the company is too high right now, I should sell. You are just basing it on a price. And whenever investors like us just look at price alone to make our decisions, I can tell you most often they turn out to be wrong decisions. But if I tell you the share price go up by 100%, and the earnings of the business also went up by 100%. How many of you feel like, you know, this is justified? The share price that went up by 100% is justified. If you feel that it's justified, just type the word justified in the comment section. Okay? So what I'm really telling you guys that, you know, good performing companies, the share price will, the share price will go up and that's normal. The only time when you should sell your company is when the share price increased dramatically, but the earnings are declining. This is a bad sign. This means that um, something is wrong. You should investigate. You should find out more about it. But I know it's not easy because personally, I've made several mistakes in my life where I sold stocks way earlier on. And sometimes I ask myself, honestly, if I look at a long-term perspective, if this company is still growing, is this company still growing? If it's yes, then I should hold on to it. But you know, it's, psychologically, it's very hard. You know, we tend to love to look at the short-term movements. We tend to want to look at things on a short-term basis rather than looking at long-term. So one of the advice that I can give to all of us, and this is the advice that I want to give to myself as well, is that, you know, have patience and look things on a long-term horizon. That is some, that's a game changer, right? You know, a lot of us, you know, I want to tell you, it's really not about your, it's not about whether you lack the IQ, whether you have the knowledge or what. It's really about having that right behavior that produces the right, the, the outsized returns for you. So there are a lot of companies that have gone up tremendously over the years, but every single quarter, if you look at their results, 
they are actually improving every single year. You look at Moody's, you look at Shopify, you look at, uh, at NCs. These are the companies that are performing really well. And you know, if these businesses are performing so well for you, then you ask yourself, are there truly reasons why you should sell the companies? You know, really there isn't an answer, right? That that isn't a good answer why you should sell the company. So if there's no good reasons why you should sell a company, don't sell it. Don't sell it just because you're emotional. When I sold my shares in Hype International, I was just being emotional. I know that the business is still growing. It's still definitely going to grow. The results reported was really nice. And just because I was, you know, just having, uh, I wasn't thinking well, I, was, I wasn't thinking straight. And I sold it just for, for, you know, purely emotional reasons. And I would say you should only sell only for fundamental reasons when the businesses are not doing well, okay? Edward Sciences is also a wonderful company. They make uh, healthcare parts for uh, heart paces. So it's very recession proof. This is one of the company that I enjoy as well. Okay. And so actually Warren Buffett have actually revealed to us the secret already. You know, but again, I would also say this, it's easier said than done. A lot of times when I give advice to people or do some sharing, uh, you know, myself, I also uh, might not be able to practice it fully. Okay. So Warren Buffett says, success in investing doesn't cor correlate with IQ once you're above the level of 125. So 125, I can assure you guys, all of us have an IQ of 125 and above, right? Once you have ordinary intelligence, all you need is temperament to control the urges, right? Because investing is very, actually investing is very simple, lah, but a lot of times it's all these emotional thoughts that go into your head. What if I sell this company a bit higher? What if I buy this company a bit lower, right? This, those kind of things happen. But if you think of investing as a business-like activity, you would remove the emotional part of it. Think of it, you know, make decisions on a rational basis. The quality of your decisions that you make over time, it will get a lot of bad, get a lot better, right? And this is the reason why it shows that, what Warren Buffett said that, you know, if you don't have temperament, you just get in trouble in investing. But you have good temperament, over time, you will make quality decisions over and over again without fail. So I just want to assure you guys and encourage you guys that, you know, some of you guys, you know, you may feel that you're lacking in your knowledge, but if you have a good temperament, it's also possible that you do well, that you, you can do very well, okay? And I just want to share with you, like, in all things that we do, you know, sometimes you have early luck, right? You, you make returns in the stock market, that's called early luck. But at times, you know, uh, you'll give up. But I can tell you in life, when it comes to learning anything, right, including for me, is that you can have two things. It's either you have a breakthrough, all right, or you can have a breakdown. If you have a breakdown, means you, 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 you meet an obstacle, you give up entirely that you don't want to try, and your life will be the same. Nothing was going to change in your life. But if you have a breakthrough, meaning things that you don't understand, you give your chance to learn. You ask questions, and you, know, you, you learn. So learning is actually an activity that actually is very important. And sometimes I realize that when people grow older, they tend to stop learning. But I can say that you know, age is, doesn't really matter. What really matters is the state of your mind. How young do you think you are? And how much do you give to yourself? Because I always ask myself, right, what is the pain of learning investing? Yes, it can be a bit scary, but we have a, a Telegram group chat. So that's the pain of learning investing. But the pain of not le learning investing and knowing that maybe you, can have, you could have financial freedom earlier, but you did not. That pain, I can tell you, is more painful, right? So learning something is very easy. But the pain of having not having your financial freedom earlier on, that is actually more painful, okay? Uh, so most investors give up quickly and they fail to see their result. But I want to assure you guys and I want you guys to stay uh, on track because that is something that will actually give you a lot of wealth. And by the way, the next speaker, John, have a lot of uh, information. I'm going to share with you some things. I, I've see, I know what he's going to share. So, uh, but before that, I just want to share with you guys uh, you know, I want to share with you guys a lot more stuff in terms of my investing strategies, content, uh, past mistakes, and my portfolio. And, you know, I really want to get to know more investors around us, okay? So, um, if you guys want to uh, get to know me a bit better, all right? I have an Instagram account. Um, I, I, I don't post uh, 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 investing content regularly, but when I do post, um, usually these are the content that I think might be a bit helpful over the long run. Uh, you know, I just try to keep it short. Uh, but again, you know, I want to thank um, John, I want to thank Terrence for inviting me. And uh, this is actually a very fun session. So with that, uh, I'll end my presentation. Thank you very much.